I, I wrote a note here now on my, <laughs> the first thing, the first topic is turn on recording. <laughs> I've done this in the past. My notes, you know, my note. Paper, number one is turn on. Turn on. <laughs> oh, we are already recording now. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to, um, to a new NSR live talk. Um, and it is a very exciting um, time, at least for me, and I hope for many others too, because we are um, at the beginning of the NSR Cloud Mundial, where we will see the best teams in the world compete with each other um, somehow. And I welcome Jennifer and Matt Davidson as our first commentators, or um, you know, who will tell us what's going on there. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for having us. Thanks for doing this. And uh, Jennifer, you had a busy um, day today. You were busy doing the real thing. <laughs> yep, trying. So it's uh, we we've, we've got some coaching from Nick Hemlin from Airspeed. Uh, so he uh, he's in town this week, and we'll be in the tunnel all week with him. So the. He just exudes mastery. He's, he's a true master of the sport, so we're lucky to be able to have him. And Matt, you are an assistant coach for Nicholas when they're training. Um, you spent the time in the tunnel, right, the day? Uh, I have. I uh, did some tunnel not too long ago that, uh, that you had on NSL, but I haven't done any since. This weekend I'm doing a uh, four-on-four camp. Um, I just had a... Uh, a meeting with my surgeon uh, today, this morning, and um, he wants me to hold off from jumping one more month, which was uh, kind of disappointing for me. I was hoping that I'd go in and get them all, be all clear, but uh, it's still okay because I'll be able to uh, get to the training camp that we're planning in Arizona with uh, uh, Airspeed XP8, and um, so I'm looking forward to that, and I'll, I'll just make a few recurrency jumps before I go out there just to make sure everything's okay. Um, as far as shadowing Nick, uh, yeah, for the four-way especially, um, uh, you know, he's obviously the subject matter expert there, um, and, um, you know, I, uh, it is great. His depth and breadth of knowledge is so extensive that uh, he is really impressive to listen to and learn from, and uh, I'll go in whenever I can and, uh, and, and take notes so that I can become a better coach as well and have a deeper understanding of the, uh, the overlays of four-way, so to speak. Um, but for uh, for eight way, I'll be uh, working with these guys as well. So I'm excited about that. And is it still only um, four way at this point in time, Jen, or or is there any um, eight way happening once in a while already? Um, occasionally we'll we'll do some eight way just to kind of remain re retain the currency that we had. But right now we're still using the four-way to kind of target our individual skill levels, especially for some of the new guys. And then, I mean, even the old guys that have the experience, we're all learning a lot. Um, the sport continues to evolve. Flying styles are continuing to evolve. So we've spent a lot of time uh, trying to be the best we can with those kind of newer technique, techniques, uh, flatter body positions, stuff like that, that airspeed's using. Um, and with Nick coaching us, we have access to a lot of that knowledge, firsthand access. So, so it's been it's been really great. But um, like I've I've learned so much this this year working with Nick, and so I I can imagine that the new guy. And end end of the week, we will see the master. The Swedish drill master in action by himself again. So I can't wait to see that. I have not, I'm trying to discipline myself and not look at the videos before everybody else can look look at them. So I, you know, I have really no, you know, information that somebody else may um, also not have. So it's exciting somehow. It's kind of difficult, but. <laughs> that would be hard for me too. It's like, I can't just trick-or-treat and get all the candy you want to check it all out right <laughs> yep, exactly yeah so um but matt did i get this correctly i mean the original um the your next first outdoor training camp was scheduled for december right or 
was it earlier? Yeah, yeah. and I, I'll be able to do that. The surgeon has cleared me to, to be able to do that, and he says that I'm strong enough to, to skydive now. His concern is in the event of, you know, if I had a rough landing or something like that, if I were to get a dislocation, he would just feel more comfortable if I were to get another month of recovery before we jumped into that, no pun intended, but yeah. Which, is, which doesn't really change anything except you cannot warm up for the training, right? If I see that correctly. Right, I was only planning on making a few jumps just to make sure that there weren't going to be any, any problems uh, prior to going to the training camp. And I'll still have the opportunity to be able to do that before the December training camp. So it's, uh, it just pushes it back a, a month longer than I thought it was going to be. And it's going to be a little bit colder here in North Carolina to make that jump, you know, during yep. that time as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can do it in Arizona too. You just, just go a day early or, you know. Oh, it, it, it's not, you know, you know that you, you don't, once you have done your 10,000 jumps or whatever, you know, it, it's there, whether you have a warm up jump or not, you know, you know how to jump from a plane. And I feel pretty confident about that. I would just feel even more confident if I took a jump or three just to, you know, warm up a little bit and get comfortable under the canopy again. Yeah. All righty then, well, let's uh, talk about um, the elephant in the room, which is the, the NSA Cloud Mongol. <laughs> How does it feel for you, Matt, that you see, um, you see XB8, Airspeed XB8 now um, doing, you know, what you would like to do and uh, just watching it from as an observer rather than um, a participant? Is it, does it, is it a little bit painful or are you used to that now? It is a little painful, uh, uh, not, not too much so knowing that I'll be going back in uh, shortly if all goes according to plan. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm excited about that. But, uh, yeah, it is a, a bit strange, you know, uh, watching the team and uh, kind of as I was watching the videos today, you know, I'm doing it from a uh, kind of a judge's eye, you know, I'm kind of picking things apart uh, a little bit here and there. And I've got some insight since I was out there uh, with, uh, airspeed xp8 in arizona when they did those jumps i kind of uh i didn't see the jumps in particular then but uh, i kind of get a, a feel and a sense for what the team's overall uh feel about their performance was and about uh, how their how their morale was at that training camp so i've kind of got some insights there that i don't have for the other teams and uh you know so looking looking at it through that lens is is interesting for sure so how did how did your um, how did your substitute Drew Andrew Hepic do in the first four rounds? <laughs> well, he did phenomenal. Yeah, it's uh, it was impressive to watch those uh, those first four jumps because I I intentionally didn't uh, get you know I heard some of the the side chatter from uh, uh, the members of of the team uh, during that last training camp, but I never asked specifically you know. Uh, uh, how each of the jumps went, but uh, so going back and watching them now, it's uh, yeah, I'm really really impressed by Andrew's performance. Did you know <laughs> or did you hear anything about the big drama that came up actually this morning when after posting the videos of the of the jumps? Do you have any? Did you hear anything about it? I haven't heard about it now. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to admit this now to the world, and I will apologize to the world. <laughs> Jeremy Rollet was one of the first ones. You know, nobody had noticed this actually so far, including myself, including in time, and whoever you know could see anything um, since they were posted. Um, Jeremy mentioned this morning when I he was supposed to to join us today, but. He couldn't, it was to became too late for him, so he'll be back in tomorrow. I hope you too, so we can talk together. Um, but he said, hey, what's going on there? The, um, oh, you know, it, it actually began even earlier in time. Um, sent me the, um, the score sheets. So actually, I did know some of the scores before. But just when, when I was ready to post them, um, the videos and, and the scores, they sent me the score sheet and they said, we are sorry, but um, yes, with XB8, no, they did a wrong sequence. So they had eight point deductions. 
So the 22 for round two, that was in round two. So I got the score oh, okay. sheet with, you know, with, a, with 14 points, they had scored 22. And I got it with um, eight points and I couldn't believe it, you know. So I, I texted Kirk and told him, Kirk, I'm, you know, I, I'm sorry that this is going on, but you had the wrong sequence. And uh, so they checked it and they saw, yeah, you know, it was 5CJH or 5CHJ, something like that. Um, and they just had, uh, you know, in the wrong order, the letters. So in time had to do what they oh. had to do, you know, deducting the points are the judges. And then it turns out that this morning, Jeremy um, told me, texted me and said, hey, um, they're doing different sequences, two different sequences there. But um, why um, did XBA this and why did the other ones that? And they both did it correctly, actually because um, XB8 took the four-way sequence of round two and the other teams took the eight-way sequence for round two. And usually they're all identical, of course, you know, as we know now, at least for four and eight-way, but they weren't because stupid Kurt at the NSA headquarters had a typo in there. <laughs> <laughs> So the four-way <laughs> sequence was, <laughs> was <laughs> and nobody noticed it, you know, and in time didn't, I didn't see it. I didn't see the, you know, I've been looking at the draw for, I don't know, for a long time now and I didn't see it. Nobody, you know, they didn't see it. So um, <laughs> XB8 did what they had on the eight-way leaderboard as a sequence and, and other teams did what was on the four-way leaderboard because they should be identical. <laughs> so anyhow that unfolded this morning and i'm so embarrassed so we, we you know we tried to fix it so i talked to everybody and said hey can't we just uh, take it as it is the sequence is so similar anyway you know whether it's jh hj i mean there are you know differences i know that but let's let's just um uh, remove the penalties and give them the points you know that because i did it correctly and the other ones did it also correctly <laughs> And only I screwed up. <laughs> so everybody agreed with that. And now everybody has to score for the sequence that I did without any penalties. Oh, that's uh, good. Yeah. So whatever you saw, it, it didn't catch your attention that they were doing two different sequences, I guess. It did, well, no, it didn't, it didn't catch my attention. The sequences were different. I kind of had to uh, watch the videos. Uh, I wasn't sure if we were going to do this earlier. And, uh, as I was sitting in on their debrief, I was watching the videos as, uh, as well. So I did catch my attention that they took a different engineering. I think they <laughs> believe they took a different J, but uh, yeah, I remember correctly, but um, it didn't, didn't catch my attention that there was, that, that it was out of sequence. Yeah, it was, so, I mean, I didn't catch anybody's attention except for Jeremy. He's the only one who is, who is obviously wondering, you know, why is, one this way, one the other way, and uh, so anyhow, right. nobody saw it. Here we are, it, and uh, so what? Uh, let's go back. Let's go to the real thing, <laughs> not to the to this uh, comic comic strip, or whatever that is. So, what did you see? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear that. Did it happen? Don't be too hard on yourself. The mistakes happen. I, you have to laugh it off. What can you do? You know, it's a, it's a flaw happened and it wouldn't have, luckily I know it's not going to happen at a world meet or world cup because, you know, many people are checking everything for correctness. And here there's only, you know, that one person right. operation. And, and uh, so, yeah, I forgive myself. I laugh it off, you know, and hopefully everybody's laughing about it. Is as it is, and it's not a luckily, it's not a million dollars, and it's not a world championship, and not a world cup, it's just the you know, and um, whatever. Well, what do you think anyway? Is that kind of um, does that resemble somehow a competition? Uh, it does, it looks like the teams, it's always really difficult to uh, to replicate that feeling of being in a competition when you're not actually in one. But uh, knowing that these jumps are going to be seen by the, the, the skydiving community in the world is, 
you know, that adds a little more fuel to the fire. It would for me as far as trying to recreate that feeling. Um, and, you know, taking into consideration uh, teams' different training days, if they've, you know, at what point do they perform these jumps in their, in their training, you know, that's got an impact on it as well. Uh, so, you know, taking all of those, these things into consideration and the, uh, the, the challenging situation that we have with COVID as well and how that's affecting, you know, negatively affecting a lot of people's training. Um, uh, you know, I think we've got to take all that stuff into consideration, but, uh, you know, that taking that into consideration, it gives us a good baseline. Um, uh, but from what I saw, you know, it looked like, uh, teams were, you know, firing pretty hard out of the gates and, uh, you know, it was, it was cool to see. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear that. Thanks, Matt. You know, I, I appreciate the um, you know, that you say it is actually somehow it has a value, you know, for, for the teams uh, to do that. Do, do you see it the same, Jen? Is that, um, is, that, would, is that kind of helpful and it has some value? Absolutely. And I mean, even, you know, I'm not a part of this competition, but even having a competition to pay attention to is after everything getting canceled this year is, is exciting. So this is a, a really good kind of way to, to keep people like interested in the fight and and uh so yeah i think it, i think it's great and talking about um picking up your remark um there matt um talking about the corona and how difficult it is you know and how in differ, different and difficult it is for teams to train the, the russians i got a message actually from the russians that they said they would have liked to participate but between weather and corona restrictions and all that, they just didn't get to jump either. Mm -hmm. And uh, their first training camp, they say, is in Dubai in December. So they are in a kind of in a similar situation and uh, I, I will make a story of it anyway. So hopefully I get the videos, they, they want to do the, the draw and then you know, compare it later. And then also in, you know, in Belgium, we have a lockdown again. In France, we have a lockdown again. So this is all, it's not only, you know that we cannot be at the same side it's even difficult for everybody to get in the air at all you know, right um let's talk about i had actually you know i was hoping that jeremy and and um and um uh, oh jeremy and who was the other oh craig of course craig and I was hoping that they would be here today with us because I wanted to talk about double duties. You know, the French team, the French eight-way team with heavy double duties, XB8 with a little bit lighter double duties because they're not doing it at the world meet. They're just, do, you know, juggling it in training. Um, so that would have been an interesting discussion because Jeremy and, you know, and, and, um, and Craig both have the experiences. What about you? I mean, you've both done four-way and eight-way and intensively. I just didn't um, look it up at this point in time, Matt. Have you had double duties at, world, at a world meet, actually? Uh, not at a world meet. I did at the World Cup in 1998. Um, we did both four-way and eight-way there. At the uh, World Cup. Yeah, I think. Yep, at the World Cup. And we ended up uh, we ended up winning eight-way that year. And I can't remember where we placed in, in four-way, so I'm sure it wasn't a podium or I would have remembered that. Uh, but uh, it was, uh, it is intense. And, it, you know, it's uh, uh, my, my respect to those who, who do it, uh, you know, quite a lot because it is, you know, it makes for some long days on competition site. Um, just the, uh, the commitments that... Uh, you know those team members have to have to make with their with their schedules you know that's a that's a heavy heavy schedule load to be able to to do that and then to tie it all together at competition time it's quite a feat and there's a reason why so few people have done it and it's different you can also you know explain for the audience the difference between um, like usba nationals um and world cups world meets you know there's a it's not the same as of the logistics and the organization of the event. If you could explain that, you know, how, what the difference right. is actually yeah. between, you know, and World Cups and, and Nationals. 
Oh, the, uh, yeah. I was gonna say one of one of the big, one of the big differences is that at nationals, a full event will go until it's done, and then exactly. we'll switch to the other event. At a higher level meet, you could be going back and forth. Um, I remember uh, the Canadian team Evolution competing in both BFS and in uh -huh. four way at that high level, and they'd be running back and forth, switching jumpsuits, and this the. the uh, the added pressure that they had to try to, you know, get in there. What what event are we going to do? Switch jumpsuits, get the camera set up. Like everything was completely different for them. So I, I definitely, uh, it's it's an added as much pressure as you have competing at such a high level anyway. To add in that second event is is absolutely like you you go to bed exhausted every night from the from the mental drain for sure. Yeah, between four way and eight way, you have kind of half days or so, right? But they did VFS and four way, which no, the VFS goes together with eight way usually, doesn't it? Or I just remember, I just remember, uh, I don't remember what year it was, but I remember seeing them running back and forth, like, because they had to go change their jumpsuit. Because uh, uh, I know in the past, occasionally they'll have they'll make it a little friendlier for some of the teams that have four way and eight way, but there's so few competitors that do both FS and free flying of any mm -hmm. type that it was a lot harder for them to, to be able to switch between events, but having to kind of switch your brain. And even though four way and eight way on the face of it, they're very similar, but the style of flying that you're going to use is, is very different. So having to like take yourself out of, of this like four-way mentality to get more into to eight-way you're going from classical music to rock and roll and back and forth <laughs> very, like yeah so it's it's a very um a purposeful thing that you have to be able to do to to be able to okay that was that was four-way now i have to get into this like this this eight-way dance that we have to do and then going back and forth so it's it's absolutely like a, a, a uh, absolute showcase of talent when people are able to do that at the highest level. And it's even still under the discretion of the meet director, I believe. I don't think there is a written rule that says you have the morning for four-way and the afternoon for eight-way, which would be kind of a little bit better. You know, the, the league director, for weather reasons or whatever reason, they can say, just say two rounds of four-way, then one round of eight-way, then another round of four-way, then an, two rounds eight were on the same day so it doesn't necessarily go like morning eight way afternoon four way or so or the vice versa so right. that, that, that can be in any way we don't really know that they try to do it efficiently you know, and yeah the uh, the yeah. world Cup in uh ever portugal uh is where it was in 1998 and uh, yeah i can just remember we had some some iffy weather as well, you know, some low ceilings, and we would have to, you know, make for some very long days, and the, the days were longer there anyway. I think it didn't get dark until 8 o'clock at night or so. So, yeah, we had some extremely long days. One of the things that uh, that I liked about it was, um, you know, we were focused on eight-way at the time, so four-way was a secondary for us, and when I think when we were able to do four-way first at a competition, it was able, it was a way for me to uh, be able to get those first-round jitters placed off to the side, uh, you know, an event that wasn't our focus. So it was kind of a, a good warm up uh, for me. That's, that's what I remember it stands out as a positive in my mind. And I've had, uh, I've gotten some different thoughts on that uh, based on different people that I've talked to, different competitors that I've talked to that have experienced that too. Sometimes they are, uh, they're not, you know, too much of a fan of it and other times they are. Yeah. Well, we have the interesting thing is we have uh, different uh, scenarios you now between France and and and, uh, and XP8. You know, France is going to the World Meet, really competing in both events, and I think we don't have anybody at um, at XP8 who is in both events. You separated that after the Nationals last year, right, where the Rhythm members actually gave up their eight-way slots, and then um, so that the eight-way team can do what they want to do. But anyhow, um, let. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Right. So let, let, let's, let's let's talk about let, let's talk about the um, the first four rounds now because you know they are um, XP8 is up by five points. Few penalties involved there, so the French had a few more um, point deductions. Um, 
what do you see about the French team? Is it, um, is it a um, worthy opponent? For sure, yeah. There's definitely a lot of talent and the skill is there. I think, uh, you know, I'm not sure what their training schedule has been like up to this point, but, uh, uh, you know, you can just see where um, it seems like they're not as static as uh, uh, XP8 is. Um, it seems like they're, uh, um, uh, yeah, some of the, the rotations on the point tail axis are kind of uh, rotating. I'm sorry, some of the formations between the point and tail axis are rotating a little bit, which is leading to some inefficiency. Um, but other than that, the, uh, the speed is definitely there. And I think if they just uh, clean it up, uh, you know, a, a little bit, it's, uh, it's going to be a much tighter race. Yeah, so XB8 has uh, caught up, not only caught up, but, uh, they've gone a little bit ahead at this point in time, at least. And they still have their joker is not jumping yet. So that'll, that'll happen soon <laughs> in, in December. Um, the, um, did you see different, um, I mean, there's different style, obviously. You mentioned that, you know, it's more static on the, on the XB8 um, side. Uh, do you see any other differences between the style engineering um, that caught your attention? Uh, the engineering, nothing that really caught my attention outside of the, uh, the, the jump that we were talking about with the, uh, where we had the mistake there on the, uh, uh, the H and the, the J that caught my attention. <laughs> right. Uh, I would have had time to, to look in, into them uh, a bit more in detail, but um, it looks like they're, you know, they're relatively close in a lot of ways, but that was just one of the things that caught my attention. It seemed like there were just some, some inefficient, uh, you know, inefficiencies going on between the point and tail axis. Uh, but uh, one of the things that really caught my attention were, was the, uh, the six jump in particular, the, uh, the French sixes were really very tight. And I think uh, uh, XP8s, you know, mm -hmm. had the tendency to breathe a little bit more. Um, their tens were tighter as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, you know, it seems like our tens had the tendency to spread out quite a bit and, uh, you know, uh, led to some long finishes. And I think we really could have, uh, the team could have, could have, you know, picked up a point or two there just by cleaning up the 10. So, um, but uh, the French definitely look, uh, they look very, like they're, they're flying very small and very tight. And I think it's just a matter of them, you know, cleaning it up a little bit to, to close that point gap and five points isn't that much. And, five rounds so it's going to be interesting to see you know the next four rounds tomorrow and i can't wait i'm so excited you know when i come i have to go and do some things still this evening so i guess when i come home you know maybe i'll post them already or begin doing something so tomorrow morning the europeans are six hours ahead anyway so when i post when i go at it at midnight then you know i can just do it because the europeans i have an excuse for it <laughs> yeah, to post it Early. I really don't know, you know, that, that's, it, it's exciting. So I'll, I'm looking forward to that. Um, did you watch, um, did you have, uh, did you watch Mathieu a little bit? You know, he's actively in there, the only competitor in the history still of the sport who won gold in four-way and eight-way at the same event. He's in the lineup. Could you identify him? Um, I don't know. Slot is he in? Sorry, I do didn't. You know what, uh, do you know what position he's in in, in the eight way? Really? I wasn't sure where to look exactly for him. I wouldn't be able to explain because they have a diff They have, you know, I have to look at it again to point him out. I was just wondering, you know, if you could uh, find him easier than me. I will find him if I look at it. I think he's in the center. I'm not quite sure though, but uh, yeah, we will find out who he is. So that everybody, everybody knows and then everybody can watch him much here under pressure. <laughs> so if anybody knows pressure, I guess then it's much here. So. Yeah, I'm sure he'll just fine with it. Yeah. Okay, well, let's leave it like this. Tomorrow we'll, um, we'll go back to it and I uh, hope you will have some time again, you know, during the day so we can connect with Jeremy, the... Um, the detector, detective, the floor detective from France. <laughs> and uh, Craig, hopefully, Craig said to you tomorrow, you're probably you're ready for it. And then we have, uh, we have eight rounds behind us, so we'll be able to tell more. And um, 
I appreciate that you took some time here, Jen and Matt, and um, I wish you um, a nice evening. And then, um, are you training tomorrow again? Are you training tomorrow again, Jen? Yeah, all week. All week? Okay. Well, say hello to the Golden Knights. I hope we'll soon see some Golden Knights eight way um, and, and, um, and uh, have fun with the uh, training and hopefully we speak tomorrow again. Goodbye, good night. Thank you, Thanks for having us.